Okay. All right. Good afternoon, Tete. Nice to see you here again. Good afternoon. How are you, Tabo? <laughs> not Thank bad, you. not bad. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for, for coming back on the platform. Sure, sure. Good, good, good. I know that just to let our audience know, there is a, a lapse in the in the in a, in, a, in the in the communication. So uh, when I when I when I'm talking, I probably have to wait a little bit so that the information comes to you before you know you can answer. So I'm just uh, letting the audience know. Okay. Okay. Good. So um, Chete is from um, um, Icon Stock Brokers which is the second oldest, you know, uh, most experienced uh, stock exchange firm uh, in Nigeria. Am I correct? Actually the third. Actually, I have, to, I, have to, I have to correct that. Actually the third, the third oldest. Third is it oldest. third oldest? Okay. There was, one, there, was, there was another one, but it, was, it didn't last as long, but it's, I'm third oldest, yeah. The third oldest, okay. And your firm was um, started in the seventies, you said? Correct. 1972. It was incorporated in 1972. Okay, great, great. So, um, so tell me more a little bit about um, the uh, Nigerian stock exchange. I know that there are quite a few on the continent. How many stock exchanges do we have in Africa? There are, there are, quite, there are quite a few stock exchanges so, uh, on the continent. So you have the Johannesburg Stock Exchange which is uh, one of the largest, if not the largest. You have Nairobi, I'm just gonna name the major ones, Nairobi Stock Exchange. You have the um, Ghanaian uh, Stock Exchange. Of course, you have the Mauritius. In North Africa, you have the Egyptian, Algerian Stock Exchanges. Of course, Nigerian Stock Exchange, which is where I am a uh, member of, where I'm, we, I run a, one of the member firms uh, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Um, so, so so generally speaking, when you have markets to, to find markets outside the first world, outside Europe and the Americas, you think of first emerging markets, and then after emerging markets, you have frontier markets. So your emerging markets are actually markets in the BRICS nations. So that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa now, uh, which are the, those are the BRICS nations. So those are where you have your emerging uh, stock exchanges or emerging capital markets. Uh, oh. Then you have the frontier markets, of which Nigeria is one of the frontier markets. Uh, so they, they, they base it on capitalization, uh, uh, of the value of the exchange, of the all share indexes of those exchanges, the value, uh, which is what, what they base the, the um, division of emerging market and a frontier market. So, um, that's those are the differences so the nigerian market for example in the nigerian in the nigerian market you have about three major exchanges you have the nigerian stock exchange where you deal in um, equity traded funds you deal with bonds treasury bills uh, they're all traded there then you have your NASD uh, exchange, which is like the NASD, which is the called over the counter. These are shares that, that are public companies, but not yet listed on the stock exchange. So they list there, uh, the requirements for listing are a lot less. So it's easier for them to list there. By regulation, by the SEC regulation, all public com companies must be listed. So if you're not listed on the Nigerian stock exchange, you must be listed on the NASD. Then you have the F FMDQ, which is the fixed income market. That's where all fixed income in uh, instruments are listed. So you have your federal government bonds, you have your treasury bills, you have your corporate bonds, you have your euro bonds, which are bonds that are denominated in the U in US dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have your euro bonds there, mm -hmm. Uh, corporate uh, commercial papers are listed there. Bank acceptances are listed there. Plenty of instruments. Uh, promissory notes, also backed by the federal government, are listed there also. Um, so, so we are we are a firm that 
have the capacity to bring clients to the market to trade instruments. Um, instruments such as all those I have, I have already um, listed. Um, so the issue, you know, the last time I came, the major issue which we have discussed, so let's just discuss it so that, you know, they will know um, what has been going on. The major issue with regulation is that part of the know your client requirement, KYC requirement on the Nigerian Stock Exchange is that you must have what we call a BVN, which is a banker's verification number. Mm -hmm. This BVN is issued to each Nigerian that has a bank account. You must have a bank account, a Nigerian bank account at that. Yeah. to trade on the on the Nigerian Stock Exchange or any of those exchanges. So um, it was an issue I was having. And so I went back and forth with, with my regulators. And what they actually said was at the end of the day, one of the best options that we could have is to have a fund. So all the mutual funds in Nigeria, you know, the asset managers handle, mm -hmm. uh, you can invest in that because you're sending money directly to the asset manager who then uh, issues you uh, units of the mutual fund. So it would be best, that's what they said, it would be best to just set up a fund where uh, our clients can uh, invest through, uh, whether it be an infrastructure fund or some kind of diaspora fund that um, I mentioned it towards the end of that uh, last uh, lecture. But since then we've spoken, so maybe you can give an update on how we can bypass uh, that issue. Yes. Um, I mean, what I've uh, discovered is that, um, I mean, to obtaining the BVN, we, we can pretty much obtain it from anywhere in the, in, the, in the West. I know that when I did mine, I went to London to have it done. I just Googled BVN in, you know, UK and the address came up and I just went through it. And within, I think, a week, I had my BVN. So I think my advice would be for those who wants to open um, a trading account with you, perhaps th that would be the best solution. Just go get it done. At least once you've got it, you've got it done. It would be even easier for them to, if they want to open a bank account in Nigeria, you know, they, they will not have to go through it again. So I would just say, I mean, this is the what I would be telling all my clients, you know, to just go and get the BVN, you know, done once and for all. Okay. So, that's, yeah. That's, I don't so know how they do it in the US, but mm -hmm. uh, I guess if you, if you just Google it, like uh, like Tyro said, maybe it will be a lot yeah. easier to BVN, Google. So we yes. need that to open their accounts. We need mm -hmm. that to open their accounts. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, you've told us um, about the, the number of exchanges in Nigeria. So uh, which companies yes. um, are selling shares in the NSC in terms of um, are these companies mostly African companies or are these mostly, you know, companies from, I mean, foreign companies? So, so it, to trade on the Nigerian Stock Exchange must be a Nigerian company. Okay. Uh, so, so they are all Nigerian companies trading on the Nigerian stock exchange. However, they uh, some of them have have um, dual listings. Some have mm -hmm. listings in the UK, in the US. Uh, for example, uh, GT Bank. They have uh, what is called a GDR, mm -hmm. which is a, a global deposit receipts. Um, and so you can you can list through. So you list on the Nigerian stock exchange, and you also list on the uh the london stock exchange is a dual listing okay. and so you can trade on either on either platform but on the nigerian stock exchange specifically are uh, nigerian companies uh different size companies you have the blue chip companies which include like the likes of dangote cement mm -hmm. you have the likes of uh, nestle mm -hmm. uh, nigeria you have um seplat mtn mm -hmm. mtn is also uh, Airtel Africa is also listed, so um, those are the those are the higher uh, valued or capitalized mm -hmm. stocks. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. the medium scale at uh, like the likes of Zenit Bank, the IBTCs, some of the other banks. You have your Presco, which is a, a palm oil company, Presco or Como Oil, and then the oil and gas firms too are listed. You know. 
I, I, I was uh, I followed the Nigerian uh, the NSC and every time I, I'm on there, I, I realized that the, some of the most popular um, uh, stocks were from the banks. Is it because the people feel that they are the safest at this point in time? I mean, what is the what is the reason behind it? Well, the banks are some of the most uh, I should say transparent stocks that are there. Uh, and for the past decade or so, they've been the most, they, they always pay dividends. Uh, they, they always have, most of them are profitable. So um, a lot of people like to trade in those, in, in those stocks. So it's pretty much uh, sentimental reasons. And you know, a lot of people on our exchange, we have a lot of foreign investors on our exchange, which, who appreciate um, the transparency of the banks with regards to result, releasing results, uh, with regards to paying dividends. Um, so that's, that's why majorly there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, volume done in the financial yes. services sector generally, yes. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, okay. okay. Um, I, well, another thing is uh, I've got my portfolio, you know, here with a company here and uh, my wealth manager always, uh, you know, asks me, you know, what, what are the types of uh, stocks uh, we can uh, we should invest in? Shall it should it be you know growth stocks, dividend stocks, new issues, defensive issues? You know to have a balanced portfolio. Um, is that is this is this some of the things that you you advise um, your clients as well? You know you, you look at the the profile of, of the of the of the client. What what kind of risk is uh, are they ready to to take? And then you guide them to have a balanced portfolio? It's the same exact things we do here for, for portfolio management. So um, luckily for us these days, with the, with the way uh, globalization has gone on, a lot of people are very informed. But you also have those who are not. And you have those who are just like, OK, look, manage my funds. So before we start to manage funds discretionary for any client, we ensure that would do a, a profile on that client. Uh, you know, if the client is an older client, they'll probably be looking for instruments that, that are less risky. So your blue chips uh, instruments are fixed income, fixed income instruments. And then uh, they're looking for regular returns. So you buy a treasury bill or you buy bonds that give a regular return every six months or the front end or back end. Um, and then you can also buy some shares that are not very risky. Um, but when you look at a younger uh, clientele base, you you would want want them to diversify their portfolio between both growth stocks and mature mature stocks. The growth stocks don't pay as much dividend the mature stocks do. Uh, in Nigeria, however, most stocks pay dividends. Um, so um, those stocks, most most stocks pay dividends. So those when you're watching, you're looking at the, the return in dividend in terms of percentages. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about it, uh, dividend yields or even, even all other banking stocks doing the same thing, uh, when you have your dividend yields that, that high, um, the risk is a lot less. So yes, you want capital appreciation, but since you're holding the share and you're making mm -hmm. your, your returns on dividends in the equities market that are higher than most interest rates abroad, um, you know, uh, you have you have those type of returns. Um, it's 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 not too difficult to put together a, a portfolio. Okay. Okay. So for so for a beginner, somebody who doesn't know much about you know the NSC, would you advise them to you know put that to pack their money in the in the in treasury treasury bills in uh, in uh, uh, fixed deposits or or bank on you know. Euro stocks, Euro bonds, you know, etc. Yeah, so so somebody who is new to the market and is wondering what to do, I'll give you a comparison. In the US, your average uh, treasury bills and bonds are doing uh, usually even below 1%. So you have 0 no. 0.2, 0 0.4% no. yields. Um, now in Nigeria, we're complaining that uh, the, the, the returns are low because you still have 3% on a one year treasury bill, but we're complaining not because yeah, it's not good compa comparatively to the US or the UK, but because we were used to 18% returns. 
wow. on, the, on the treasury wow. bills. Yeah. So those days are past now. And so you're, you're, you're about 3% on the, on the fixed deposit with a bank. You're looking at the same 3 to 4% for a year, averagely. Uh, some are actually like 1.5% now. Um, so yeah, so the easiest route is the disposable income. Um, you can you can even buy you can actually buy some euro bonds right now doing a yield of four or five percent yield. Um, that means you you buy a federal government euro bond or you buy a corporate euro bond. I think Access Bank has one fidelity. Uh, so we can we can also uh, buy those bonds that you know give you semi annual coupon payments and uh, and and risk almost risk free when you talk about a sovereign bond. Um, so yeah, so you can do that. Or what we have in Icon here is there's an order management system that stock bro bro uh, stock brokers have to have. Ours is uh, with fintech. It's, fintech. Um, yes. So financial technology. We have we have a provider. The name of the company is Global Tribe, and uh, the provider the the order management system gives you access to. Uh, the stock exchange, so you can see trading going on real time. There's about a five second delay, uh, so you see trading real time. You can also get research from our portal. So once you, I give you access to the portal, you can access assess uh, research material, um, and it doesn't have to be that technical. If you don't want to go too technical, you don't have to. If you do want to, you can. So. You have access to this information and, and the, with different algorithms, you have, uh, it'll give you recommendations on what to buy, what to sell, what to hold, uh, it'll tell you why you should do either of those things. And it will give you an intrinsic value. For example, it'll tell you that Zenith Bank right now, based on their fundamentals, is worth about 22 Naira. And you see it's trading at 16 Naira, 90 Cobo. So it's a good time to buy. Buy, hold, um, speculative trading, I don't really advise so much on, except <laughs> if you're really good at the market. So you, when you, you buy a stock that you know is undervalued and know that it will, it, will get, it will gain its value with time. In the meantime, yearly you collect your dividends, you have your interim dividend, in Senate Bank specifically. Interim dividend, you have your, your year-end dividend that is paid. So, there are many options in the market, you know, and the returns comparatively um, are, are a little bit better. Of course, it's a frontier market, so you'd expect the returns to be higher than the U.S., for example, that's more stable. So, yes. Yeah. Wow. So, so your platform creates that. So if I was to say I want to uh, join your, um, uh, if I was, you know, a, a complete stranger, wanted to join your, your corporation, so... Mm -hmm. Once we've done, or we've gone through the fact finding about my profile, my you know my risk kind of you know I'm prepared to take. Then uh, once I, what do I need to? What is the next step? Is, is there anything that I have to do? I have to pay to get on your platform, and if yes, how much? How so to get on the platform, to get registered uh, with us, to open an account with us, you do not have to have any initial deposit. Okay. Uh, we can open the account. We'll open it. We'll open the account. We'll set up a CSCS account, which is the clearinghouse. That's where you, you can you can see your transactions uh, electronically. So we'll set that account up for you with the clearinghouse, and then we'll also um, you'll also have access to the other management system where you can now assess. Uh, recommendations on what to buy. You can see what is going on. And then if you decide to buy, uh, you'll have to now credit uh, our account. Once you credit our account, you can start trading. You can trade on your own from that portal if you want to, or you can ask us to trade for you. You can, you can do it either way. Uh, on the sell, on the sell, on the buy side, you must have cash. On the sell side, you must have the stock in the, in the CSCS position. So uh, when you want to sell, sell, and we can do a direct uh, claim for you that at CSCS, it will, it will directly credit your account, your, your accounts that you assigned for that purpose. So once we sell, we pay you, we pay the money. The only fees that um, come from trading with us is the broker's commission, the stock broker's commission, mm -hmm. which is 
max at 1.35. Uh, that's I can negotiate it. We can, you know, we can talk along, you know, along those lines to see if there's any discount that, that can be given. However, you have regulatory charges. So you, you, you the stock exchange charges, your SEC charges, your CSCS charges. We don't have control over that. Um, so total charges about 2.25%. That's total charges, max 2.25%. Uh, which I said you can negotiate the uh, stock broker's commission fees. So okay. uh, those are the only charges is when you trade. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, the explanation. Is there anything else uh, you would like to add for, you know, beginners? Because we're going to be doing this kind of interview, you know, regularly where we're going to be going more into details when it comes to, you know, certain stocks. I know that people get excited when I talk about Dangote shares, you know, Dang anything Dangote, you know, is bound to, is bound to sell here for the diaspora. Yeah. I mean, what, do you want to add a couple of words for, you know? Sure. Yeah. So, so I, think, I think the first thing for beginners coming to the Nigerian or looking at the Nigerian market, First, of course, visit my website, iconstockbrokersltd.com. Um, but also go to the Nigerian Stock Exchange website. You know, you can just, the NSC, nsc.ng.com. Go to the Nigerian Stock Exchange website, or you can Google it, and um, get information on what has been going on on the exchange. There's a lot of data on, the, on that website about what goes on on the exchange, the type of uh, values you show, year to end uh, returns on the exchange. So you can have an idea of what is going on on the stock exchange. You can also go to the DMO, the Debt Management Office website to see, to look at some of the bonds that are being offered. Uh, I didn't talk about the savings bonds, which is an easy way, it's an easy bond, there's an offer every month. Every month there's a Nigerian savings bonds uh, the savings bond goes between two and a half to three percent for two or three years, um, and it's safe. It's easy. You get paid quarterly. Every quarter you get a coupon payment. Um, it's liquid. You can sell it on the exchange if you want to get out of it before before term. Um, you can even buy a longer term, the, a shorter tenor uh, savings bond on the exchange also. So the, there are different opportunities. So you visit my website, um, visit the Stock Exchange website, and um, get as much information as you as you want. Like I said, you can open accounts without trading. So you can open the account, be watching this, the, the market on a daily basis if you're interested. Um, we have information, plenty of information on that portal once I once I give you access to the portal. So yeah. Yeah, fantastic. We, we, we're going to be, you know, uh, putting all the information, you know, on the information page on this for this video. So, uh, and also, you know, people can go on the Gaia website where, you know, they can just click on the Nigerian stock market and then you've got your information there as well. I can stock brokers, you know, Thank limited you uh, is on there as well. So, so you know, and also if they want to, you know, get in contact di directly with with uh, with you, you can just go to the email address Gaia at uh, iconstockbrokersltd.com, and that will go straight to to um, to Chete, you know, um, and we'll be able to help you with this thing. Thank you very much, Tyrone. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Thank you for Thank you so much. Thank you for explaining, you know, you know, you know briefly what is Nigerian stock market about. Uh, hopefully, next time we can, you can perhaps introduce us uh, to, you know, go into details into a couple of stocks, go into details, and then you know, share. Yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I can do that. But I think, I think what we can, do, what we can really do next time is to get. I'll try and get my uh, fintech. The, the 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 other management system I use, I'll try and get the, see if the MD can come on with us. Yes. And that way yes. he'll be able to break it down and we can go through the entire user interface mm -hmm. so that it can it, we can you know we can show it to, on our share it on our screen and so you can go through that. It might be, it might, it might be advantageous to to do that also. Fantastic. That's great. I'm very happy Thank about that. Much. So our, our, everything that we have in the West, we've got it in Nigeria as well. So. People, you know, do tend to think that, uh, you know, it's still, you know, paper-based and things like this, but everything oh. is done online, 
you know, Definitely. for whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tete. And, You're welcome. Uh, Thanks so much. Thank you very much. And have a lovely day. <laughs> Take you care. You do the same now. Take thank care. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>